Hello you! I'm Guru Larry, and I welcome you to the show where I stamp on your rose-tinted spectacles. Movie mistakes. This episode, we peruse into the 80s time-travelling comedy, Back to the Future. The epic story of a young man who pushes out of saving his best friend's life by travelling back in time to the 1950s, and then gets frigid with his mother and creates a paradox where he's never bored and Teen Wolf would never be made. So, nothing of consequence then. How late for school? Everyone's favourite bossy teacher, Mr Strickland here, is giving Marty flack for turning up late for school. But can you really blame him, considering he turns up for school in the middle of the bloody night? Also, that's one dedicated teacher for patrolling halls 24-7. Time for a change! Did you know that sending family pets into the future has a chaotic effect of changing matter in front of your very eyes? As in this scene where the doc sends his dog Einstein one minute into the future, when he opens the doors to greet him, you can see that he has a standard black LCD stopwatch around his neck. But in the very next shot, where he puts watches together to compare them, it's suddenly turned into an illuminated red stopwatch. Ooh, the dangers of creating paradoxes. Not only can they eliminate your existence, but also drastically change the design of mid-80s timepieces. Another time-travelling car? If you thought that the DeLorean was the only time-travelling car in Back to the Future, you were wrong. As in this scene where Biff is chasing Marty through the town, he begins to chase driving a 1946 Ford Super Deluxe Convertible, but when he begins to close in on young McFly, it suddenly evolved into a 1948 model. There may have been flying cars in 2015, but they had vehicles that chronologically evolved 60 years before. Obvious stunt double! Whoa, hang on a second! Rewind that last clip. That's not Biff driving. Apparently Biff couldn't spare the time to chase Marty in this scene. He was off having some morning coffee with his future self about the sports almanac. Couldn't possibly be his stunt double now, could it? Oh, uh, apparently it is. Creepy kid! Hill Valley 1955 seems to be the hub for all time travellers, as there's multiple versions of everybody in this movie. As in this scene where Biff decides to fumigate his car in poo pourri, that kid Marty nicked the skateboard off is staring on in the right. But hang on, now he's standing right next to him holding the rest of his scooter. How on earth can he be in two places at the same time? Best guess he must have enjoyed the event so much in his life that he nicked the Doc's DeLorean and relived it as he's too busy being amazed by Marty's skateboarding exploits the first time around. I'm gonna get that son of a bitch. The Doc's Secret Stalker We all know now, thanks to Back to the Future 2, there are actually two Martys in 1955. But strangely, there's also two people looking for Doc Brown as well. As when the young McFly is in the cafe looking up the doctor's address in the phone book, you can quite clearly see that someone else has already ringed his name in pencil, then rubbed it out. Well, that or they got really cheap and only had the one fake phone book printed for the movie, eh? Oh. Clothing Conundrum Speaking of things that were already invented in 1955, those self-drying jackets from Back to the Future 2 are also around them as well. As in this scene where George is hanging out the washing, if you look closely, they're already dry. Well, I say they're self-drying, maybe George is some really neurotic form of OCD. Well, he's always been a nervous type, possibly why he wasn't properly in the sequels. Forgery! Poor old Marty here is writing a heartfelt letter to the doc, warning him of his impending murder the night he goes back. But as you know, Emmett doesn't like spoilers, so tears up the letter. But when the doc shows his letter pieced together again in 1985, why has it been completely rewritten by somebody else? Nah, <laughs> no, I'm not touching that joke with a 10 foot barge pole. Hey, 
how long does it take a DeLorean to get up to 88 miles an hour? Apparently a lot longer than one might expect judging by the constantly changing weather conditions. As in this scene where Marty takes the run up to hit the lightning. Well, let's count together. Wet here. Wet here. Wet here. Dry. Wet. Dry again. Wet again. Dry. Wet. Dry then wet again immediately. And then finally wet again. So it rained a grand total of five times during Marty's run up. So either DeLoreans take forever to get up to 88 miles an hour, or that's one hell of a run up Marty took. Doctor Who? And last, but not least, We've already been through Not Biff trying to run over Marty in 1955, but back in 1985, we now have Not Doc driving the DeLorean. That's where he's had one of his face changes like he does in the sequel. And to wrap it all up, how about a nice view of a crew member's head in a reflection of the license plate? Nice! But that's it for this episode of Movie Mistakes. Be sure to check out the other episodes, or maybe if you think I'm worth it, drop me a subscription. But next time, I'll be looking into the gaffes of the Goonies. So see you in the future. Well, unless it's an extra of me. Bye-bye now.